What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to model a fire escape in Revit. So fire escapes are quite cool in my opinion uh, and they, they do uh, kind of add a little bit of a, an interesting uh, part to the facade of the building and I thought why not go over how to model something like this in Revit. Even though they're just stairs and some floors, I think it's important to kind of go over uh, what can you do in order to make them look really, really good and just to make them look realistic. You don't want them to look kind of odd and weird because the, the regular stairs in Revit and the regular floors aren't really going to work for something like this. So we're just going to be explaining all of that, how to create a really good looking fire escape. Uh, now before I get started with that, make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials. So why not? Mi why miss any of those when you can subscribe? and hit that little uh, bell icon and then you can get notified when I upload new videos. And also make sure to like this video, it does help me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, helps promote the videos to other people that might want to see that. And finally, uh, make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. It's the first link in the description. There I have numerous courses on Revit. There's over a hundred hours of content there. And there I take the extra time to explain everything in depth. I have a beginner to intermediate level course, as well as many advanced level courses, where I just go over every each individual setting and uh, the whole workflow and so on. So if you want to learn Revit, really kind of in depth, uh, that's the place to check out. So again, as I said, the first link just below the video. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's go straight to new and then for the template file, I'm just going to choose the architecture design template, the metric version. And if you're interested in uh, taking a look at my templates, uh, you can find both of them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the third link in the description of this video. So check it out if you're interested. Anyways, let's just click OK and let's give Revit a few moments to start up. Uh, now we can go, uh, let's go here to the south elevation in the project browser and then I'm just going to add a few more levels. Uh, it makes sense for our fire escape to have uh, at least a few more levels. So let's go here to the level tool, LL is the shortcut, I'm going to be using the pick lines uh, uh, draw function and then for the offset let's type in 360 centimeters to give it the same offset and then we can have perhaps five levels in total. Uh, once we have all of the levels, let's go down to level one and then let's go straight to the wall tool and then for the wall type, I'm going to scroll up a little bit and find the exterior wall. I'm just going to be using the brick one and then let's place a wall segment such as this. Uh, next, I'm just going to check uh, and set this to final level of detail. You can see that this here is the finish layer. So I'm just going to flip it to the other side. So it's kind of pointing down to the south elevation. That's what they want to have. And that's well, pretty much it for now. We have our wall and perhaps one more thing uh, that we should do is just make sure that the top constraint is set to uh, level five. So it goes all the way to the top. Now, if I go to south elevation, as you can see, it goes all the way to the top. And now we can get started on our fire escape stair. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of dividing this uh, into uh, first part of this tutorial, first section, is going to be figuring out how to uh, assemble the stair type. And then the second one is going to be figuring out the floor uh, that's going to be used for connecting those stairs. Uh, so to create the stair, uh, we can do that in level one, perhaps zoom in a little bit, uh, go to the straight tool. And then for our type that we're going to be modifying, I'm going to go with the 190 max riser with 250 going because that's the closest thing to what they want to do. Uh, now I can go simply here into edit type, duplicate this type, and then let's call it our fire escape stair. Hit enter, there we go. And the first thing that they want to change is the run type. So the run type is a separate nested family inside of your stair, uh, inside of your stair system family. So you click here to change that family. Now, as you can see here, if I open up the drop menu, we do have a few options. And actually, I want to create a new one. So let's go to duplicate and let's call it the fire. Uh, 
let's just call it the FE perhaps for short fire escape and then this is the run okay uh, now for the treads you just want to make them a little thinner so let's go with two centimeters and then for the risers turn those off we don't really need them okay click OK and we're done with that setting next we want to change the supports both the right and the left support they're set to stringer so you want to change that here's the family and then you can edit that and again as you can see it's just a separate nested family we can duplicate that one and let's just call it the fe support hit enter uh, for the material i'm just going to leave it as default uh, for now and then here you want to change the depth to something like i don't know let's go with 25 this i'll change to something like seven uh the the structural depth on run and then for the width let's make it smaller like two click ok and there we go uh, and you just want to apply the same one here so you just go here to edit and then you just change it to that new support that we have created perfect okay so once we have all of this uh, created i can just click ok and of course i forgot something so we have to go back into edit type and uh, just change the minimum riser height and the minimum uh, sorry the, the maximum riser height and the minimum tread depth so this should go up to something like 28 yeah it's a really steep stair and this can go like 16 because you don't want this to be comfortable you want this to take up as least space as possible but still be functional in case of emergency so let's hit apply okay and then for the width let's go with 70 that's usually the width of a person plus a little bit for more uh, and then for the railing here uh, for the railing setting uh, make sure to set the railing on the stringer we can use the pipe one click OK and then create your stair run and this is what we get now I always like to double check simply by going here to the default 3d view just to see what we have and as you can see it's, it looks like that and it's not that steep at all yeah I guess it used 18 for the riser height that's kind of odd i did set this to oh i guess it figured that out previously so it can had the uh smaller slope that's kind of annoying let's try that again so riser height with it set this to 28 i don't know why it doesn't want to apply that well, let's try that again okay now as you can see it applies the new one so if we try that there we go okay that's much steeper this might even be a bit too steep so you want to play around a little bit see for this one it just didn't want to accept the parameters that we have set up here so uh, in the end this looks way too steep so let's perhaps get rid of that one cancel out of that let's go to the stair and then let's try this again so I'm going to try something like 20 perhaps 22 by uh, let's keep it at 18 and apply okay okay that looks good perhaps change this to 18 okay that looks a little bit more comfortable but still could be a bit too steep let's try that again so as you can see it can be a little bit back and forth let's try setting this to 20 and apply okay now it's going to be 20 perfect let's leave it at this I'm quite happy with this one so we can just delete this stair because we don't need it and then this is the one that we're going to be using and of course as with anything else in Revit it does require a little bit of back and forth okay moving forward let's go back to level one and let's just set the position of this and if you're wondering how does it have this really cool uh, presentation uh, well that's because uh, that's the setup of my template that I'm using and you can find it in the description the third link anyways uh, so once we have one of these uh, the next step is to create the floor for this for so for the floor because it has to be kind of a construction floor uh, we want to use some steel uh, beams and then create a beam system representing that floor so what I like to do is go here to structure go to beam and then load in a beam so let's go here to load family let's scroll down and find structural framing hit open steel and then there should be something like rectangular 
Now let's go with this one, hit open. Uh, now for the size, I'm just going to go with some of the smaller ones and then I'm going to modify that, click OK. There we go, this, this is the one that we have. So I'm just going to go here into edit. And then for the, well, this is actually quite all right. I can use this one without any trouble. So uh, instead of using regular beams, you want a beam system. So you go here for the beam system and you create just a simple rectangle for that kind of housing. Now you want to just attach this to the kind of the outside of your stair, just like that. Uh, next for this distance here, let's set that to something like 80. For this distance here, let's set that to 80 as well. And then you just want to use pick lines to pick this outside line, this line here, and now we can just use a regular line to connect this. Perfect. And now you just want to go here to the split element tool, SL is the shortcut, and then use the trim and extend to corner to fix it all up like so. And finally, I'm just going to set the beam direction and I just like to pick this line in the center hit finish and it's going to look like that. Well, it doesn't look exactly what you want to see because here uh, simply we have the uh, issue with the spacing. So change the spacing to something like six centimeters, hit apply, and now you're just going to have a whole bunch of them. Uh, here, if you're wondering why does it look like this, it's because of all the tags. So you can just make a cross selection, go to filter, check none, and then just check the tags. Here we go, hit apply. Okay, and then simply hit delete and this is what you get. So as you can see, it kind of has that construction feel. Uh, maybe turn on 10 lines. Yeah, that's what we have. Uh, you can spread it out a little bit. Perhaps let's try eight. Yeah, perhaps this could work a little bit better. Perfect, so it does look really good. Uh, now the next step is to add perhaps some horizontal beams. So for that, what I'm going to do is go here to the beam tool, go into edit, and then I'm simply going to make the height a bit higher. So duplicate this one, and then let's call this one 80. And just change this one to eight. There we go, hit okay. And now uh, go to your level one. Okay, it looks horrible again. Let's try that again. Filter, check none, tags, apply, okay, delete. Perfect, let's now go to beam. And then for this beam, you just want to go here from one side to the other. There's the beam. Perhaps extend it a little bit further here. Same thing goes here towards the wall. You're just gonna stretch it into the wall. Perfect. Uh, next, let's go again to beam. You can do the same thing here on this side and on this side. And final on the other side. And you can fix it all up, make it look nice if you want. And you do want to make it nice. Okay, so we do have something that looks kind of presentable, so to speak. This one should go up to there. Uh, let's do it here as well. And finally, let's fix this one and make it all look nice. There we go. Okay, let's go back to the 3D view and see now what we have. There we go. As you can see, it does look kind of presentable. Uh, so uh, the next step is going to be selecting the, oops, not the wall, uh, but did they move it? No, I didn't. Okay, so you just want to make a selection like this, uh, and it's going to select all of the beams individually, so you don't want that. So uh, a way around this is to kind of hover over the edge and select the whole system, hold the control key, and then you want to add individual beams, the horizontal ones, just by holding the control key each time you click, and it just adds all of this to the selection. There we go, looks perfect. And then finally zoom out, Go here to the clipboard, go to copy the clipboard, paste, and then align the selected levels. And just, you just want to pick out the rest of these levels. So just like that, hit OK. And it's just going to go, vroom. there we go, all the way to the top. Perfect. Perhaps we don't need the top one. Yeah, there we go. And then for the stair, uh, you just select the stair, you go to the select levels. This turns it into a multi-level stair. So you just connect it to these two levels, hit finish, and it looks like that. And that's exactly what you want to have. And then you realize that you don't need this at the bottom, so you can delete the bottom one because that doesn't make sense because it's the, the ground. So let's delete that. 
perfect okay so once we have this uh, it's only a matter of adding the railing and then some windows to make it all nice uh, so for that let's simply go to level uh, that should be level one or sorry level two there we go level two zoom in a little bit if it looks like this all weird that means that this is set to detail level course just change it to fine and now it looks perfect okay so the next step is to go back to architecture uh, go to railing and then for railing I just want to use the, the center line here go up to there and then from there to here perfect and then you hit finish go to the 3d view it looks like that and uh, now you can change it to the pipe railing so you can select that and change it here to pipe if you prefer pipe you can leave it as that uh, then go back into level two again go to railing and then you want one segment going on like this and finish or actually perhaps move it out yeah just using the arrow keys to kind of move it out a little bit and then finally the final segment just go here to railing and then go all the way from here to here and then from here to the wall hit finish go to the 3d view and this does look nice select all railings so this one hold the control key this one and this one and now make it all pipe because it wasn't all pipe and then again you want to go here to copy the clipboard paste and then align the selected levels and then let's go three and four because we only have level three and four and click OK. There we go. Perfect. And that's pretty much it. You only need perhaps windows to kind of finish the look. So we can go to level two uh, and then go here to window. Uh, let's use my architecture design window that's included in my template. And let's select this one, the largest one. Place one here on this edge and then place one here on this edge and now it looks all nice. And then you can maybe move it aside a little bit, go to the 3D view and then it looks perfect. So select these two, hold the control key to select both and then go to copy to clipboard, paste, align to selected levels and then again three and four, three and four. There we go. And I'm quite happy with the way that this turned out. Uh, so. There we go, we have a perfect fire escape stair created for Rav in Revit. Of course, you can take this uh, a few more steps uh, further. You can add a bit more detail, be a bit more precise with the beam system and uh, with the railing. And even with the stair type, you can add some profiles for the stringers and you can make it look all nicer. Uh, but for now, for just representing the fire escape, I think it looks fairly decent. So uh, if you're interested, if you were ever wondering how to assemble a fire escape in Revit, well, this is how to go about it. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you're interested in more in-depth tutorials where I take the extra time to go slowly, step by step, explaining anything from basic topics to fairly advanced topics in Revit, you can find all of that on my website, balkanarchitect.com. That's going to be the first link in the description. Make sure to check it out. And if you want my project files like this, here that we have assembled. You can find that on my Patreon. That's going to be the second link in the description. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I'll be back soon with another Balkan Architect tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.